There's a lot we're still learning about the brain, but that shouldn't stop us from using what we do know to make it the healthiest, sharpest, most resilient version it can be. I'm Dr. Sanjay Gupta. This is Discover You. I wasn't the type of kid who always dreamed of being a doctor. Far from it. But when my grandfather suffered a stroke, I found myself surrounded by doctors explaining to me what exactly had happened in his brain. Thankfully, my grandfather made a full recovery, but I was hooked. The experience became my launch pad for becoming a brain surgeon. I needed to understand all I could about this powerful organ, how it shapes and sorts our quality of life, how it defines and designs our every thought and move and memory. First, it should be no surprise given how complex the brain is that the recommendations for any given individual's brain health will be equally diverse. But I do know this, there is a best way to care for your brain. There is a best way to live, to move, to eat, to sleep, to think, to engage with the world that is best for your brain. Exercise and movement are not just good for the heart, they're great for the brain. Try to move for at least 30 minutes several times a week in activities that get your heart and your brain pumping. I know that sounds obvious, but do you ever wonder why exercise helps so much? It pumps out a substance called BDNF, short for brain-derived neurotrophic factor. When you understand this, it's no wonder that exercise makes you feel different, feel better, calmer, more present, less stressed, and sharper almost right away. Best of all, the exercise doesn't need to be nearly as strenuous as you probably imagine. Just move more, move often. Don't find yourself sitting the majority of the day. Keep learning, discovering, and exploring. This doesn't necessarily mean just taking new classes or trying new puzzles, though those are both good ideas. Try to find activities that really stimulate your brain in new and different ways. One way I think about it, get outside your comfort zone a bit. The old adage, do something that scares you every day, may also do wonders for your brain. Sleep and consistent quality sleep cannot be overstated. And just to clear this up, there's no such thing as catching up on sleep after a hard week of work. I wish there were. Your brain needs rest to rinse and reset, and limiting that rest can have long-term negative impacts. What you eat matters. Several doctors and researchers, including myself, have a new mantra, if it's good for the heart, it's good for the brain. Be mindful of what you put into your body and how it makes you feel. I kept a food journal to see what really worked for me as my own personal brain food. Turns out, fermented foods are my secret weapon. Pickles, figure out yours. Socialize safely when and where you can, even if that's not in person as often. It's not just a romantic thought. Human connection is essential for the brain. We are social creatures. We owe our brain's powers to human connection. We are just scratching the surface when it comes to strategies to build a better brain. To best understand why these habits help, prevent memory loss, build resilience, keep your brain sharp, we're going to explore the inner workings of the brain. I'm Dr. Sanjay Gupta. See you next time for more Discover You. The brain is a large mass of nerve tissue and arguably the most complex organ in the body. It is what allows humans to process emotion and speech while also regulating behavior. Additionally, the brain controls both involuntary and voluntary actions throughout the body, including the vital functions of respiration and heart rate. White matter tissue contains nerve fibers, primarily made up of myelinated axons, that act similarly to bundles of insulated electrical wires, which carry messages from one part of the brain to another. Tracks are generally classified into three categories, or subgroups, projection, association, and commissural. And it is through these tracks that regions of the cerebral cortex are able to communicate with other parts of the brain, the spinal cord, and the brain stem. Originally defined in the early 1900s by the German anatomist Corbinian Broadman, the Broadman areas divide the cortex of the brain into different regions based on cytoarchitecture. Broadman studied the cell layers, looking at cell size, spacing, density, and structure from region to region, separating the brain into 52 different areas. Broadman's numbered areas are still widely used as a way to label and differentiate areas of the human brain. The brain has three main parts, the cerebrum, 
the cerebellum, and the brainstem, with many distinct and important areas within each of these sections. The cerebrum is the main portion of the brain and is divided into right and left hemispheres. It is responsible for higher order functioning. The cerebellum is responsible for voluntary movements like balance and coordination. The brainstem is responsible for regulating vital functions like heart rate and respiration.